Hello, today we're going to focus on demand for insurance. Specifically, we're going to look at a partial insurance case. Partial insurance cases happen when either we are a risk averse individual who is subject to expensive insurance, or potentially when we have cheap insurance and we're a risk loving individual. In this case, let's take a look at why we're looking at partial insurance. We can do so by finding the comparison between our probability of the loss occurring and the premium we have to pay per dollar of insurance. We can also take a look at the utility function that we're subject to, which will tell us our risk aversion preferences. Okay, so let's compare first our probability of the loss versus our premium per dollar of insurance. In this case, we have a 40% chance of the loss, but a 50 cent premium per dollar of insurance. This means we have expensive insurance, so we will be on the rightmost column. As for our risk preferences, the utility function u of c equals ln of c, or the natural log of consumption, is an example of a risk averse utility function. This means we will be on the top row. Combining those, we will be on this box right here, or the partial insurance case, where the loss is greater than the amount of insurance. This is one of only two cases where we're actually going to have to do a lot of math. In the other events, under full insurance or no insurance, there's actually not too much math involved. OK, so for this question, we're going to start out by finding our expected utility function. We can do so by multiplying the probability of the bad state occurring times the utility in the bad state and adding that to the probability of the good state occurring times the utility in the good state. In this specific example, that would be expected utility is equal to the 40% chance that the loss occurs times the utility in the bad state, which we're going to denote by the natural log of consumption in the bad state, plus our 60% chance that the good state occurs times our natural log of consumption in the good state. The reason we know this to be 60% is that there's only two things that could occur, either the bad state or the good state. So we will always have a 100% chance of one of the two occurring. Next, we can take our marginal rate of substitution of this expected utility function. Though it looks a little different than our normal utility curves, we go by the same principle which would be to take the partial derivative with respect to the bad state and then put it over the partial derivative with respect to the good state, treating these as two goods. OK, so the partial derivative of the bad state or consumption in the bad state would be 0 0.4 over CB. And then we're going to put that over 0 0.6 over CG, or our derivative of our expected utility function with respect to the good state. When we change around the math here a bit, we're going to get 0 0.4 CG over 0 0.6 CB, which is 2 CG over 3 CB when we simplify. Next, we're going to take a look at our budget constraint real quick to find our price ratio. Our budget constraint is given to us in the question. This gamma is our premium per dollar of insurance. So our price ratio will be gamma over 1 minus gamma, the price of consumption in the bad state, plus just 1 as our price of consumption in the good state. We can think about both as composite goods, but one of which we need to factor in the amount of insurance that we have to pay. This means we set our MRS equal to gamma over 1 minus gamma over 1, or just gamma over 1 minus gamma. 
So our MRS we found to be 2CG over 3CB. We set this equal to 0 0.5 over 1 minus 0 0.5, plugging in that 50 cent per dollar premium, which means 2 thirds CG over CB is equal to 0 0.5 over 1 minus 0 0.5, which is 1. So 2CG equals 3CB, or CG is equal to 3 halves CB. From there, we should go back to our budget constraint that we have written up here. I'm going to rewrite it down here. So gamma over 1 minus gamma times CB plus CG is equal to M, or our starting income, plus, again, gamma over 1 minus gamma times M minus L. A lot of this information is given to us in the problem. For instance, we found that gamma over 1 minus gamma is 1. So we can say CB plus CG is equal to our starting income M, which is 500. We can then add our gamma over 1 minus gamma, which is just 1, times our starting income again, which is 500, minus our loss of 300. So CB plus CG is going to equal 500 plus 200. So CB plus CG equals 700. From there, I can plug in 3 halves CB for CG. And I can say CB plus 3 halves CB equals 700. So 5 halves CB equals 700, which means CB is equal to 1,400 divided by 5 which is going to be 280. Okay, if CB is equal to 280, we can also find CG. CG will be equal to 2 thirds, or rather 3 halves CB as found here. So I can say CG is equal to 3 halves of 280. So CG is equal to 420. OK, so that would be our answer for CB and CG. Lastly, I can also find the amount of insurance. I can do so by using this formula here. CG is equal to my starting income minus the amount of insurance I buy, which would be K times gamma or the premium for insurance. So CG will be equal to our starting income of 500 minus 0 0.5K. Since we found CG to be 420 in this case, we can plug that in as well. So 420 will equal 500 minus 0 0.5k. So negative 80 will equal negative 0 0.5k. Or k is equal to 160. $160 worth of insurance. As we can see, let's take a look at what would have happened if we hadn't purchased any insurance. We started with $500. We had a loss of 300 in the bad state. 
by purchasing $160 worth of insurance, what I did was transition $80 from my starting income or the income that I would have had in the good state to the bad state. Now saying that I would have originally had $200 in the bad state, 500 minus the $300 in repairs, but I'm adding 80 back due to the insurance I purchased out of my good state funds.